Failure is not an option. Keep going. It's never too late to begin again. Ooh, I am with Dr. Cheryl Lentz out of the University of Illinois. And, um, oh, fabulous. Yeah, she's been in the library. And Dr. Cheryl, how are you today? Keep I am going. fabulous. It is amazing to be able to be here with you and to be able to share what we're trying to do is really just change the world as if it's easy, right? Piece of cake. We, we were talking off camera, and and uh, again, you're 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 one of the warriors that are frontline in the university with our most amazing resource, our our children, our youth, our future leaders, and. Um, what we're talking about, we're going to go off a little bit. It's never too late. It's, it's, it's failure is not an option. And being a frontliner, working with the feeling failure and how to work through that and the anger that comes with that, that and we're going in a different direction because this is what's being called for a failure and that the, the, the failure around you, right? Who knew economy. I could make a career out of failure, right? I mean, it's something that who knew you had to learn how to fail? Because mm -hmm. I didn't learn till high school and college when I was at the University of Illinois. It started all of this to know failure is an art. And most time failure stops you. And that's what part of my point in the book was. It stopped me for darn near 35 years. So I can't tell you I'm the smartest person in the room here. I'm actually the least smart. But I was willing to endure the pain to be able to say why. COVID had to force us into forced compliance. And that's what happened to me when I was in college is my professor said, nope, and I had to pivot. And it was the first experience of going, well, you can sit and whine about it. You can sit and cry about it. And I did for a little bit. Didn't exactly handle it as the lady I have turned into, but it was still the ability to learn those skills of what happens when life doesn't go the way you want to. And you still, <laughs> and you shine, right? Let's let's lean to right there. Because right mm -hmm. now, the the uh, the audience is listening they're listening saying no life is not going the way that this I is not how i stay. planned it stamp your feet right <laughs> and they were allowed to wait first you get to you get to really acknowledge that and say god damn and but now what do, what do we do with it so what what are you saying to your students and 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 what does that look like and how do you pull them forward from like yeah things are like not fun right now and i don't know where to go with that this is really instrumental in my ted talk that happened in the fall of 2020 and it was very unique because the the ted folks asked me to do something that's not in my wheelhouse i'm not an md i'm a phd but they wanted to know the anatomy of failure. Where does failure live in the brain? Where do those emotions come from? And to your question, what do we do about them? It was my first deal that I, I'm one of those annoying valedictorians, right? Everything came easy to me until it didn't. And when it didn't, suddenly it was like, well, what am I going to do about it? There's the process of failing. And part of what I learned is really part of the book that I did with my TED Talk called Failure uh, Has No Alibi. And it's a line by Napoleon Hill, cannot take credit for it. But it's still the idea, you have to own it. You have to embrace it. You have to acknowledge it. Most of us do anything but we hide from it like I did. You don't want me, I'm going to just turn my back and do something else and then I'm out of here. And I don't have to acknowledge it, I have to do this. But we still get messages all the time from the universe telling us, going, yeah, are you sure about this? Are you sure about this? I mean, think about Edison, right? Edison took 997 ways to build a light bulb. But he didn't get all wrapped around the axle and emotional. He just used the scientific method as we do as a doctoral scholar. That's what I teach. The method of how to go through, just like we did with COVID and the vaccine. This works, this works, this didn't, this didn't. Now we keep moving it until it does. But what I did and I learned sophomore year in college, one time I walked away. And here's why. It was painful. This was my dream. I had never known anything else. I wasn't thinking about anything else. There wasn't a plan B, C, or otherwise. And so it was a matter of going, well, what else is there? And I like what you said, what else do I get to? Because life doesn't happen to us, it happens for us, but I didn't understand it. And so I'm sitting there, great, one time I'm out the door. 35 years later, I get an opportunity for Groundhog Day to redo it. And here's the interesting thing. I'll kind of feel a little thunder because I haven't done the second TED Talk yet. 35 years later, a friend's mind is like, all right, Cheryl, put up or shut up. You've been talking about this failure thing in there. What are you doing to fix that failure? And I was like, Ooh, 
here are the techniques. I had to acknowledge it. I had to own it. And I had to decide to do something about it. But it was painful, absolutely painful, because it was me. I couldn't then separate, and this is what I teach my students, separate yourself, the person, from yourself, the skill. I thought they were one and the same. So when I heard you suck as a musician, I heard you suck as a person. It's not true. Me, lovely, absolutely amazing. I get great reviews. Everybody's amazed with me, right? But my skill set, not so much. You know, I wasn't as good as, as what I didn't hear. I was just good. And my professor at the time, he was training Olympians. He goes, you might be adequate. You might be competent, but you're not the superstar. You're not the rock star. We're only training rock stars here. Bye-bye. <gasps> so what I did is I put it away and I walked away just like most people do. Conflict is painful. You don't want to look at it. You don't want to talk about it. It didn't happen. Feel it. Now I'm a failure in every aspect of my life. I've been divorced twice. I've been ill. I've been in a wheelchair. I have all of the major points with Google Ross and I've done them all. And the universe is like, do we have your attention yet? The universe had to bring me to my knees for me to understand this. And then it was like, all right, the only way through is through. So instead of whining about it, forgetting about it, as I looked it right in the eye and says, all right, it's you and me, let's go. And we looked at it and, and I finally was able to take the power away from it, but I always had the red shoes. This is the part that most people don't understand. We've always had the ability to do this, like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, the red shoes came along for the ride. We just didn't know how to use them. And so now I keep a pair of red shoes actually in my office. And I keep them to remind me, girl, whenever going gets tough, you know the answers. You trust your instinct. You dig deep. But it's painful. And most of us don't want to do that. So here's the interesting story to fix that 35-year-old angst. Is I had a friend of mine who is the director at the church, who is no longer there, by the way, which I think is significant. But I November of last year, I asked him, I was like, I got to know if I still got it. He goes, can I play? And I am a classically church organist, pipe organist. So it's not like you can go play in your home. I need Anywhere. the whole pipe organ, right? Wow. So months and months and months go by. The weekend before Valentine's Day, he calls me and says, Valentine's Day, I get my shot. I still get emotional about it. I fell back in love with my music in a church on Valentine's Day. And I was able to go in and see whether or not I had the courage to face my fears. I cried all the way the night before. I cried on the way to the church. I cried at the church. I'm sitting here at the pipe organ shaking as I'm putting on, because you have to wear special shoes. So I've got my organ shoes. I've got my music. I haven't played in 35 years. And the minute my hit, you know, I've got tears coming down. The minute my hit the point, I felt the power and I felt, and I'm sitting there looking at the cross in front of me going, so this is what I've been waiting for. I've always had the red shoes. I didn't have the courage until that day to see if I still had it. Now, everyone's question is always, how good were you? I sucked. Okay, it's been 35 years. You don't just pick it up like where you left off. But the point is, is I didn't realize the music director was there. He said, Cheryl, I have never heard more beautiful clunkers in my whole life. He goes, you had the courage. He goes, I didn't hear the mistakes. I heard the music that you still had inside of you and the willingness to try. And that to me was, I still got it. Am I good enough? Nah, I've lost a lot of it. But the fact is I sat there for what, an hour and a half that day? Again, the tears finally went from fear to joy. The fact that I faced my worst fear that I don't know what I was expecting and I'm not as good as I once was, but I still got it. And I don't know why I'm still discovering this in there, but this is what most of us need to learn. You feel the fear and you do it anyway. You know that there's something inside you that needs to be heard. And I had the courage that, I mean, I was petrified, probably had an ulcer for three days afterwards because I was just couldn't sleep for two days, couldn't eat. I just, I didn't know. But the fact is I couldn't live with not knowing. And that's the failure piece. I'm not a fail. Failure is a temporary state of mind unless you keep it permanently. I turned failure into success. Now the success doesn't mean that I'm playing at Notre Dame and that I'm suddenly in there because I haven't played for a while. I was playing for a couple months for a while and I don't know why, but the success is that I faced my fear. That failure has no alibi. Nobody was here between me and nobody else mattered that day to know, can I face it in there and deal with the pain? And now the pain is joy because so I did through, it. It doesn't own you. That's right. And you claimed back, you just, you went from fear to joy going through. For 35 years of a journey that I just turned it off. Like somebody took a, you know, a power button on the power remote and says, yeah, you don't want me. I don't want you to turn it off. But the thing is, is we never completely turn it off. 
when I stopped being the professor up here, it went from my head to my heart. And then my heart started to hurt. And then I started to really listen. The universe is like, honey, we've been trying to contact you for years. You didn't hear the message and you shot the messenger, even if we got there. And suddenly, finally, during COVID, the messenger is like, honey, you need this music and you're not going to survive. That's your sanctuary. Because when you're a musician, it's not who you are or it's not what you do. It's who you are. It's your soul. My soul was hurting. It was incomplete. And I was always wondering why I was so there was something missing. You know, my life, my divorce, the universe said we had plans for you. And you didn't follow what you were supposed to do. Now we're getting it back on track. That's when the joy came in. That's how you know you've got it on there. It doesn't have to be perfect. It never will be. But when you know that you've got it, I felt that power and that magic in my fingers again. I've never forget that feeling. And now when going gets tough, I turn to my music. It's now part of me again. But the fact is it never left. That's the lesson. It was always there. Just like for many people who are listening to this, you've got the music or whatever it is your dream. It's always going to be in there. Question is, are you going to die before you give it life? And I couldn't, that wasn't acceptable for me. I wasn't going to let that fat lady sing and say that, you know what? I've got a sense of urgency now. I need to get this out before I leave this earth because I need to know. My soul needs to know. And, and yeah. it wasn't, so it, you went through, by the way, what I think is that the first things we, we've had like three years ago, and it was the, it's the, in there. It's in the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, yes. You so, never forget it, ever. It's just part of your soul. But the fact is you are always in control. And I didn't realize that I could have solved this 35 years ago. So through would have been easy. It's through, so fate, and it hurts. Oh, it does. Uh, I will tell you, worst pain I've ever felt, and then best pain I've ever absolutely enjoyed. It was magical. And it was not what you intended mm -hmm. 35 years ago. Didn't look like it. I mean, journey. you look at the diploma on the wall, it still says University of Illinois, but it doesn't say performance or music. But it looked a little different. And so sometimes we look at you bloom where you're planted. You go where you're needed. I would not have the career I had had my professor not diverted me. Now, I have a only regret is I wish it would have stayed in music somehow. But I went into a way that this, it was almost like the universe is saying, yeah, you're not ready for that yet. We need you here. And I will always salute and serve where I'm needed. But there's that part of me that can I do both? And the answer is now it is part of me. And that's what I get to do for me, not to me. But it was a painful journey, I'm telling you. And most of us won't take it. And that's where failure has no alibi. If you're not willing to take it, you cannot fail. You cannot take that journey. You won't know the sweetness of success. It's too, it's our choice. And, and that's and the part we don't want to blame ourselves for. But and it is our choice. And the decision on what success looks like is part of the failure that Mm -hmm. Success doesn't look necessarily, you don't know what success looks like. That's not in your control. I had a vision in my head. I was going to be married. I was going to have children. I was going to have grandchildren. Then I found out I can't have children. My husbands didn't want to be married to a woman who couldn't have children. I've been divorced twice. I lost my career. I lost my husband. I lost my house. I lost my dog. I mean, it's like God just pulled the thing. It's like, have you ready to listen to us now? We're just going to start over now that you're receptive and you get this. Failure is a state of mind and it should be temporary. It's not the destination. It's the part that we have to learn. It's just learning. But most of us find it too painful. We don't want to learn. And quite frankly, I didn't for 35 years. I turned my back on it. I wish I wouldn't have. And I guarantee you I'll never do it again. So it's it's like a talent you go through. It may not be the best town. It really may not have anything good to eat or stay in there. But you still go through it because that's the only way to get to the other side. Exactly. There are no shortcuts. There is no easy way to fix this. And most people, the solution is, if I don't feel it, it won't hurt me. That's true. But if you don't feel it, you can't resolve it. And you can't see what's waiting for the other side. And so most of us were like, I'd rather not go through the pain. Thank you very much. Which was my answer. Until I decided one day, okay, I'm strong enough to do this. And it is amazing. It's the whole Winnie the Pooh, right? We never know that we are stronger than we ever thought we could be if we just gave it a chance. People think, you know, when I speak and I do all these things that I'm not afraid. Oh, honey, I feel the fear and I do it anyway. And it is amazing when you bring that armor and you look and you really test yourself because the rain comes after the rain or the rainbow comes after the rain. But most of us were playing it safe and I wasn't going to play on the sidelines anymore. So it's it's not easy but you have a choice, but I will guarantee you it's probably going to be painful, but what's waiting for you on the other side is so worth it. So worth it. And the pain ends. It does. Mm -hmm. Okay. So classroom students, right. And then the audience that's out there. 
they're going through frustration, pain, and and also the that what what does failure look like? What would you say to them? The you going through that town of failure, go through. What would you say how to how to take that first step and keep going? You don't have to do it alone. And this is, I think, the hardest part with COVID. When I went through this, I had my friends around me and various people did various things in my life. Some of them were got really real with me. I remember a friend of mine, his favorite advice is suck it up, buttercup. He goes, I'm going to tell you that every time. And, and it's funny because I might even call him only every four years. I went to doctor school with him. He goes, you really need to hear this? I'm like, yep. And you're the only one that gets to say it to me either. Thank you very much. But sometimes we need to know that we can be our own worst enemy. We shut ourselves down. When we have friends, really good friends that are willing to tell us what we need to hear, not what we want to hear, that they will tell us, Cheryl, it's time. You need to quit complaining about this, quit whining about it, quit doing it. What are you going to do about it? And they hold me accountable. So you need an accountability partner. Now, that accountability partner doesn't help, doesn't make it happen. But they hold your hand while you make it happen. It's going to be painful. Somebody needs to dry your tears. Somebody needs to hold your hand. Somebody needs to be there when you fall. That's what this is all about. Put your support network in place. That's what I do for my students. I'm one of the rare faculty of the call. It's like, honey, I know you're hurting. You need to cry. So I'm going to get you there. I need to help you because most of what I teach them is so way more than just the, the content in the classroom, just completing their dissertation. It's about being a good human. And you don't have to do this alone. I have a lot of good friends. They got me through the pain. They dried my tears, but they held my hand and said, go, it's time. And they were there when I got there and they were all in pins and needles going, you know what? Sometimes it's, it's the being a mom. I was a stepmom for 23 years, got divorced. And now I'm a mom again, just for the semester, but you can't protect your kids completely. They have to learn to stand on their own two feet. My job as a teacher is to teach independent students. I, they come to me codependent. I move them to interdependent with a little bit of grace and love. I will move them to be independent so they don't need me. We cannot have our kids dependent on us or completely dependent on someone else. When I find a partner, if that ever happens for me in love, I'm going to have someone who stands next to me, not someone who's going to hold me. I need to know I can do it on my own so we can partner and go through life together so neither one of us falls down. You need that support structure. So don't think I did this all myself. Oh, there's an awful lot of people and invisible wink on all of those diplomas. And there's one more here I just finished. But it's that ask. I learned this from my students long ago. Closed mouths don't get fed. You need help. You ask for it. It is tough for me to ask for help with the independent woman. You all think I have it all together. Not always. And when I am less than, when I am vulnerable, when I am in pain, when I'm Life doesn't go as expected. I will have to reach out to them. And they will often going, are you kidding? Really? You? Mm -hmm. And they will give me a hug and they will dry my tear and they will love me anyway. That's what love is. Love is unconditional. They love you no matter what. We don't have that. And I didn't get that from my husband. So I've had two of them. They loved me if. They loved me when. They didn't love me. That's what we need to do for right now. So when you're sitting, you're thinking, going, can I do this? The answer is, yeah. And if you need help, you call one of us. You call your network and we will help you. We can't do it for you. But I promise you, we will be the wind beneath your wings to help make it possible and to stand next to you and celebrate every last moment when it goes your way. But it's okay. So failure is it's not something that you can put to the side or pass on. Mm -mm. can't let anyone do it you can't phone it in they can't do it for you can't hire somebody to do it for you there is no stunt double here <laughs> there's no one in there it's all you but we often are our worst enemies because we don't want to feel the fear i mean sometimes the pain was zero it put me in a wheelchair for nine months nine months that it finally had to get my attention going do we have your undivided attention you are now in a wheelchair you have a choice whether you're going to get out and i never thought i thought it was permanent mm -hmm. It's here. It's here. And it's that, what do you call it? Gumption, inner fortitude, sometimes damn near stubbornness. I'm like, you know what? I am not going to let it beat me. But here's the part that we also have to look about. You may not get the results you're looking for. When we shoot, we may not always score, but you can guarantee you'll never score if you don't shoot. 
So I can't guarantee you that even if you go through the process, I still can't have children. It's never going to be in my wheelhouse. My parts have already been removed. That's the way it is. It's final. But it shifted. And now I have kids in a different way. I have families Surrounded that are in a different way. By them. Exactly. And so we can make our own things, even if God told you that I couldn't have children. Great. I have other people's children I'm now raising for the semester. I now have other options, but it doesn't look because that diploma doesn't say what I wanted it to say. Sometimes God does a better job doing God than we do. And if we can get out of our own way and see that maybe it's even more magical than we could have ever imagined, but we have to be able to surrender it and to maybe let the picture look a little bit different than we might have thought so. So I still believe in goals and dreams, but you have to still be open to possibilities because all of my dreams have come true with the one exception. They just don't quite look how I imagine them. And if I can ditch the picture, it can be like, well, I wanted kids. I have them, even though at least temporarily. Do I have that love of my life yet? Maybe. Do I have other things in families? I am I have a choice. And many of us will just say, well, I'm stuck with this. Not if you don't want to be. So don't settle. Do something about it. Just know I can't guarantee you that what you're going to do, you're going to be successful at all the time. But I know you'll never be successful if you never try. And I could never go to my grave knowing I didn't at least give it a shot. And, and the piece is, is that the part of failure is part of the journey. Absolutely. You can't get through life without this. So instead of fighting it, embrace it. I take failure out to lunch. I think my guardian angels, we just live in happy hour. And I stopped fighting them. And I'm like, belly up to the bar, boys. If this is what it's going to be. I've got my own bar at Cheers. And I make light of it. I'm not saying it's not serious, but I'm not going to let it take me out of the game. A lot of stuff comes down the pike and I have a choice. Am I always this perky? No, I have to work at it. And life doesn't always happen the way I want it. Certainly I have failed at every major thing that I've ever tried, but I'm still here. And I'm still smiling and I get to do some amazing things. They just look a little bit different. So the trick has got to be, you got to surrender. you got to let go of what it is you thought you wanted because you may still get it. It's just going to look a little different. I'll give you a funny example. I remember I always wanted to stay at the Plaza Hotel in New York, right? The big plaza, <laughs> right? The whole life of Tiffany's in there. The challenge is I went um, and received an award about 10 years ago, but I stayed at the Crown Plaza. And I said, oh, the universe has got a sense of humor here, boys. I wanted the plaza. You gave me the Crown Plaza. I'm like, still the plaza. Watch that fine print, girl. And I'm like, ah, so now I'm a little in wanting things that I want because if you're not specific the universal substitute crown plaza for the plaza still the plaza right we are in charge of some of these things and we need to take more control and ownership of it even when things go wrong but when things go wrong it's context it seemed wrong at the time now there's some of the greatest gifts in my life I wanted to go back to that professor who changed my life and back then I was hating him because of what I thought he did he gave me the greatest gift ever and he died before I could thank him. Mm. And I know it's hard for us to think of failure as a gift. Are you kidding me? Being in a wheelchair is a gift. Are you kidding me? Being divorced twice. Yep. Every single one of them. Best things that happened to me because they were learning. And what did you say at the beginning of the segment? What did you learn? That's the journey. Not where we get, but how we get and with whom we get and what we've learned along the way. That's what the accounting is going to be at the end of the road. Not the big house and the big cars that say, what did you learn? Who did you bless while you were here? Who are the lessons and gifts that you gave? Because now I'm the mentor. I have almost 100 graduates now. I think it's like 96. What an honor that I now have, but I would not have understood had I not been willing to take that journey of pain. But it wasn't always as pain. Now the journey is a lot more humorous. I go to happy hour instead of, you know, um, some of the more detrimental things I did in the beginning because it's tough to learn. But once you do, you learn the skills. And that's why learning failure is fun. You're just like, ah, failure is just part of success. Like Edison, right? 22 didn't work. 522 didn't work. 622 didn't work. And then someday, 798, bingo, the light bulb goes on. You got to stay in the fight. I got out of the fight the very first time. Stay in the fight. Keep showing up. And you're halfway there. It's part of the journey. That. just you don't have to take the journey alone so don't think I'm fearless I have a lot of people that have helped me along the way this is not a solo act I had to do it myself but I got love and support when I needed it and sometimes it was tough love I have a friend of mine 
he made it do me, he made me do it myself. He goes, I could do it for you, but I'm not. I'm like, oh. could have made it my life a whole lot easier. Could have, but it wouldn't have been the learning, which is why here's another piece that I will offer as a gem, a little nugget. Honor the struggle. I have to do that with some of my students and I have to tell them, it's like, I could give you the answer and I'd feed you for today. I need to teach you how to find the answer. So I feed you the rest of your life. That's the hard part. Some of them struggle with that because it would be so much easier if I just gave them the answer today. They went out long. But when I make them struggle the same way the world has made me, now I'm toughening up the armor. I'm smoothing that stone, right, in the river. Stones don't come out this smooth. We're polished. The polishing comes from the hell and heartache we choose to endure to get to that. This is not something you're seeing the final. Well, maybe not the final, but you're seeing the end result of a lot of years of hell and heartache. Now I do it with grace and style and elegance most of the time. Not always. I still have a great temper tantrum I can throw, but it doesn't but stay there. going through it. Yeah, absolutely. I don't stay there. That's the secret because yep. I won't allow myself. I get my five minutes, but I remember honor the struggle. Know that in order to get there, just like a butterfly, and I think your, your um, audience will know the idea of a butterfly. If you help a butterfly out of a cocoon because you feel sorry for the butterfly, you kill it. You will kill it because they will never develop the muscles they need to fly. They'll get out of the cocoon and stay on there because that 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 flexing of their muscles it increases their strength. So when they emerge, they can fly. We don't like that emerging in the cocoon piece at all. We like being the expert. We don't like be getting to the expert. Malcolm Gladwell, 10,000 hours. That's all it's going to take. Are we willing to pay the dues? I wasn't. It's part of the journey. Oh, it's hard. It's hard. I don't want to, you know blow sunshine up anyone's skirt. But I will say it's an honor and a privilege to do that hard work where you get to the other side going, man, it feels so good. It feels so good. You're like, yes. Nobody has to know either. It's internal work. But when you get to the end of your life and you have the accounting, I want to make sure no regrets. I either tried and it didn't work out. Sportsmanship, then, you, then maybe it was never meant to be or it was meant to be differently. But if you will never score if you don't take the shot and now i learned courage is probably the most important piece about failure is to stand up and take a shot you might not always win but you're going to feel a whole better when you a whole lot better when you get off the court going yes we're afraid of the end result don't be afraid of it you can't be afraid of it because if you don't take the shot you'll never know i needed to take my shot and it took me 35 years to build up the courage to do it please don't take 35 years if I would have known and had a mentor when I was in my 20s, maybe things might have been easier. Maybe maybe I would have stayed in the business of music. Maybe I wouldn't have slammed that door so definitively so hard that I would have left something open for possibilities. Maybe I would have been happier, even if the music was just for me. And I think sometimes we often think we're selfish if we just look at our journey as for us. You have to fill your own cup before you can fill the cup of others. You fill them with what overflows. Same thing you're on an airplane, right? Put on your mask to help others. If you're passed out, you can't do anything for anybody. So you have to learn how to take care of yourself. And I think this is where some of this anger comes from. Because we're so frustrated because we didn't get what we want. We're throwing a temper tantrum. It's like, well, that's one way. Or you could consider what else could I do that would change the situation and make it a little bit better for someone else? Because it wasn't about me. My journey is the end result today. But the only reason I got here is because I was helping everybody else along the way. And suddenly when I helped others get what they wanted, somehow so did I. That's an amazing discovery. We're not about here for us. We're here to serve others. But you have to understand what those lessons are. And sometimes they're painful. But they're and all. And that's there. okay. Because that's, that's okay. just how it's supposed to be to exactly. you to get through. Exactly. Just like the butterfly. Know that when you're on the other side of it. Sometimes you have to learn to stand on your own two feet. Remember where's the kids when we're learning to walk, right? Now I can do this, mom. I can do this, mom. Leave me alone. And it's such an independence. Somewhere along the line, we we got away from that. I'm going to show you I can stand on my own two feet. Because what does a kid do when they learn to walk, right? They they get up. They, they fall down. Huh, guess that didn't work. Giggle. Look at mom. Mom's okay. You're fine. Get up and they do it again. Yeah, if yeah. we could just think of it as a game, as a way, it's like, great, it didn't work. We'll try something else instead of going, oh, which I did, is throw a holy tantrum and change the course of your life forever for 35 years instead of, gee, can I try something else? I never even thought about it. I closed that door, slam, gone forever until I had the courage one day to say, 
I wonder if it's still there. Einstein's all about never lose a holy curiosity. That's all it was is what if, what's next? Could I, could little old me actually do this? Do I have enough strength? Do I have the courage? Can I find out? Nobody was in that church except me. And I didn't even realize the director was listening. And he says, I didn't hear what you thought were the mistakes. I heard your courage. I heard the beauty of you willing to try that most people won't. And I'm like, I didn't even know he was watching me. And I sat there was like, you know, it's like the kid in the candy store, all excited. But I think it's very profound that that day came on Valentine's Day, the day of love. We normally think of love with others as our significant others. This was completely the love of self and the love of acceptance and the love of being able to feel the fear and do it anyway. And so I admire people who are willing to be able to take their shot. So find out if you still got it. You might not have all of it, but you're never going to know if you don't at least make the call. So Dr. Cheryl Lentz, Philly has no alibi. What a great way right. to end it. Um, and again, this is also, she, she's prolific and, and she's part of many, many anthologies of so this one being also noble for business that's coming out. And we'll get to see Cheryl again. I want to see the organ shoes next. And the red shoes. <laughs> they look a lot like ballroom dance shoes. So I will show them to you, but I had actually go out and buy a new set because when I did this 35 years ago and closed the door, I sold it all. I gave it all away. I had to go put it back together again. It was very interesting. There, there's never not something that you need an excuse to buy new shoes. So there you go. All right, everyone. Um, again, Dr. Cheryl Lentz, Philly has no alibi. And um, we'll be seeing her again soon. Take care, my friend. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure, too. Good luck. Bye.